sir our program is live now sir yes. very good ma'am thank you
Rajapalayam Rajas College, PG Department of Computer Science, in collaboration with the IGL Hands On Private Limited USA, welcomes you all for the day three session of Friday International FDP on innovative strategies in emerging technologies. The more extensive a man's knowledge of what has been done, the greater will be his power of knowing what to do. Yes, you are in the right path of enhancing your power of knowing. With the grace of God, I formally invite our colleague, Mr. Ganesh Kumar, to welcome the gathering. Our interactive strategies and emerging technologies. I welcome Mr. Pradeep Sandaranarayanan, Data Analytics, to share his knowledge in the area and to implementation in industrial sector. Welcome you, sir. I welcome all the management people, staff of RRC, and outside participants in this online FTP program. Welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ganesh Kumar, sir, for formally welcome the gathering in this wonderful morning. It is time to know about the chief guest. I am glad to invite Ms. Sarnia to express the achievement of our chief guest. Good morning to one and all. I take immense pressure in introducing our chief guest. The resource person of today's session, Mr. Pradeep Shankar Narayan. He is a native of Kwaimtur and had his bachelor's from PhD College, Kwaimtur and did his MCA from REC Calicut. He has total industrial experience of 24 years and started his career in data analytics around the year, around early 2005. He has work experience in the industrial sector of manufacturing, finance, retail, and currently serving as architect in the cybersecurity analytics team in ESA. Apart from sincere working, he is passionate towards music, which made him work with IGEL company for hosting many events. Once again, I welcome you, sir, for this today's session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nezra Nima. And you can have data without information, but you cannot have information without data. I request Mr. Pradeep Sankar Narayanan, sir, to interact and share your knowledge about data and analytics with the all participants. Thank you. Um, thank you, Deepa and, um, you know, the entire RRC college team uh, for um, providing me an opportunity to uh, present uh, my work here. And uh, thanks to Mr. Krishna Kumar, Mr. Raghupati, and uh, Mr. Rajesh Kumar, and the entire IGL team for the help and support um, and the guidance they gave me for, um, for this presentation. So with that, um, let me uh, share my screen. Can you see my screen? No, sir. Not yet. Yes. So now I can see, sir. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, my name is uh, Pradeep uh, Sankar Narayanan, and um, I work at uh, Visa. I, uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about um, data and analytics. Um, the reason I uh, picked this topic uh, was, uh, you know, a couple of uh, reasons, I should say. You know, uh, one was um, that uh, you know I've been uh, working in this domain for uh, for about you know close to twenty years now since early two thousands, and um, I thought uh, you know um, whatever expertise and knowledge that I gained, uh, this would be a good forum to share that. And um, the other other reason uh, I should say that. Uh, um, data uh, data has become um, so uh, pervasive and uh, 
it has become so mainstream that um, that you know it's 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 no longer um, uh, something that is confined to um, the corporate world or the academics or uh, scientific community or uh, something like that. You know, uh, so every um, you know uh, normal person. Um, has to know, you know, especially in the current, uh, you know, world that we live in, it's important that we understand uh, data and try to, you know, comprehend it and uh, uh, find out, you know, how what kind of insights that we can um, build out of it, what kind of, you know, decisions can be made out of it. So, um, those were the you know primary uh, objective for uh, picking this uh, topic today, um, and uh, with that you know, so this is the um, um, agenda for today. Um, so we'll start with uh, you know uh, defining uh, what what is uh, data and analytics, you know uh, uh, you know. How, how do we? How can we define that? And you know, what do we mean by that? And you know, um, so uh, we will go through that, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, a, a brief history of analytics itself. You know, uh, how uh, how this whole uh, world of analytics has uh, transformed over a period of time, and uh, how has this transformed uh, us? In, in, you know, by uh, by making us. You know, use uh, the right decisions. Uh, you know, um, and and over you know, uh, you know, over a period of time, we we could see that um, the, the the world of analytics itself has changed. The world of data has changed, and uh, so we will you know we'll just briefly go through uh, all of that in the um, uh, you know in the second slide, and um, and then you know. Um, you know, analytics. Uh, we'll talk about analytics architecture, and uh, you know, uh, the architecture here. Uh, you know, is, is is just going to be um, at a very high level. You know, a, a very generic. Uh, uh, you know, uh, flow of uh, how uh, the whole analytics. Uh, you know, the basically the behind the scenes of analytics. I would say, you know, because when we talk about analytics, you know, usually. Um, people, uh, you know, immediately what comes to their mind is the um, uh, is the graphs and you know the charts and all those uh, you know visualization aspect of it. But uh, you know there is also uh, things that happen behind the scene, and uh, you know we'll just have a look at it. You know how things are, um, how things happen. You know um, in the, the background and. Um, you know, I'll share uh, some a uh, few dashboards as a sample. You know, I, I just picked uh, a few uh, verticals. One, you know, I just picked retail as a good example because you know it's it's a um, uh, very uh, an example that I think everyone can relate to uh, because you know we, we all uh, you know uh, do either online or you know. Uh, in-store purchases, so it's, it's something that you know, as a common person, we all can relate to. Um, so I thought, you know, a, a, a use case or a sample dashboard of that would be helpful here. And um, uh, being uh, this uh, being a forum uh, of uh, mostly uh, you know uh, people from universities and other educational background, I thought you know we'll share some uh, dashboards, uh, a dashboard from from that. Uh, uh, you know, background, and then you know we all live in a, you know in a pandemic today, and uh, that actually has you know uh, actually brought out the the criticality of data in a way uh, you know fortunately or unfortunately, and uh, so you know I'll also uh, you know um, um, talk about uh, dashboard um, uh, on 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 COVID nineteen. Um, and again, you know, um, these are just uh, sample dashboards uh, so that, you know, people get an idea of how to uh, build uh, analytics uh, dashboard that visually pleasing and, you know, something that you can uh, do it on your own. 
and uh, these are not uh, developed by uh, me you know these are something that i found on the internet and um, i'll talk about some you know tools and uh, technologies uh, uh, that uh, you know that can help you get started uh, in this field um, some open source um, tools a uh, few of them are uh, you know um, uh, tools that are uh, free, freely available, um, you know, and uh, some are, uh, you know, um, maybe with a limited cost, uh, you know, you can purchase online. And, uh, you know, um, uh, some of, you know, what, what are the latest trends in, uh, you know, in the world of data? Uh, we'll talk about that um, uh, in the last but one slide. And um, you know, finally, we'll have some uh, uh, Q and A session. Okay. Um, so, uh, what is data and analytics? Uh, so, uh, this is um, how Wikipedia defines data. Uh, so, data is information, knowledge, and wisdom are closely related concepts, but each has its own role in relation to the other and each term has its own meaning. Uh, according to a common view, uh, data is collected and analyzed. Uh, data only becomes information suitable for making decisions once it has been analyzed in some fashion. So, you know, uh, this is a very generic uh, definition of data and, uh, you know, we all know probably already what, what data means. But here, I think the, the um, uh, biggest takeaway um, to me is uh, that, uh, you know, the, the second line here where it says data only becomes information suitable for making decisions once it has been analyzed. So, um, and that's where the analytics part of it comes into picture here. So um, unless you um, analyze the data, understand the data, or comprehend the data, and uh, only then you know it becomes uh, information. And uh, you know, one, only uh, then uh, you could make some you know informed uh, decisions out of it. So until then, uh, you know, data is pretty much useless, you know, uh, until you make those uh, uh, analysis and try to comprehend it. So that is the, uh, you know, critical aspect of it here. And that's what we try to do with analytics. And let's, you know, look at the uh, definition of analytics here. So as per Wikipedia, analytics is the systematic uh, computational analysis of data or statistics. It is used for the discovery, interpretation, and communication of uh, meaningful patterns in data. And um, again, you know, here the the, the uh, uh, you know the biggest takeaway is to um, the for for from an analytics point of view, uh, it is the understanding the meaningful the patterns in data, and try to uh, derive you know some meaningful inf information out of those patterns and uh, how do we do it you know you know it's it's it's, it's not you know um, you know uh, it's not a simple you know simple task it's not a, some, something that you know i can cover in one hour you know there's a lot of uh, you know aspects to it but today we'll uh, you know look at some of the um, you know uh, simplest uh, way uh, you know we can derive some meaning out of uh, data you know, there are a lot of complex analysis, a lot of complexities, you know, especially in today's, uh, you know, world of data. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, those are all, you know, uh, I would say, you know, uh, future steps. You know, first step is to do some uh, basic understanding of data and have some basic analytics. So, um, uh, let's go to the uh, next uh, slide and, uh, you know, um, so this is the you know a, a, a brief uh, history of analytics, and um, here you know this is again I you know um, analytics uh, from uh, from an IT standpoint, uh, or, or uh, you know analytics after 
uh, we have had computers and uh, you know all the other uh, you know softwares and applications that we have today. Um, so the, the way I uh, see it is, uh, you know, if I uh, look at um, history of analytics, uh, you know, um, data and analytics has been there, uh, you know, since humans uh, have started living in this uh, world, uh, you know, um, in some form of the other. I mean, uh, the uh, you know the, the analytics or the data. The, you know, it may not be too uh, scientific in nature, but uh, in some form or the other, it is always there. You know, a, a example would be something like, you know, uh, farming. You know, um, I'm sure our ancestors had, you know, used to look at weather patterns to figure out when to, uh, you know, uh, plant crops. And, you know, uh, so all those things, you know, some form of data was used and collected, uh, but probably not uh, as scientific as we have today. Uh, but uh, but look at it, you know, this is from, you know, uh, from uh, um, history from a more recent uh, perspective. Uh, so um, 1970s is when uh, we have had um, uh, Frank uh, E. Cobb who invented a relational database. And uh, that, uh, you know, sort of uh, enabled lot of uh, you know uh, data analysis in the sense that in until then uh, one of the uh, major uh, roadblocks for analysis is um, i guess you know uh, access to data and you know or faster access to data i should say you know and collection of data too uh, so uh, because you know there is no way to store such a, you know uh, you know volume of data and until we ever had this uh, RDBMS. And so that came about in 1970s. And that's when the whole, you know, uh, Oracle and uh, a few other database, I think it was uh, Informix and some other databases that came in uh, at that time and uh, started this whole uh, RDBMS. And uh, around 1980s uh, is when um, the, uh, this world of data warehousing and business intelligence, and uh, which is sort of the uh, you know uh, starting point of you know a more scientific way of analysis, you know, and uh, the world of analytics, I guess, you know, truly came into uh, during that period. And it was in you know Inman uh, Bill Inman who started this uh, who is considered to be the father of data warehouse, and um, and he brought in a whole uh, design new design of how to uh, develop uh, or build uh, databases that is more optimal uh, for uh, storing and retrieving large amounts of data, and um, there is also. Um, you know, uh, designed by uh, Ralph Kimball, you know, which is called the Star Schema Design, uh, which is very popular even today. You know, a lot of data warehouses use, uh, you know, um, either Inman or Kimball's designs. So uh, it's still in play. It's still, you know, all the traditional uh, databases uh, still uh, use this design. So uh, 40 years uh, later. So, um, and, and, you know, um, it was uh, around uh, the early 2000s uh, with the arrival of uh, you know Google and uh, and uh, you know so uh, also the Facebooks and uh, Twitters uh, that we uh, started uh, saw you know we saw a, a whole new uh, type of data. Uh, until then, the data that was uh, consumed was mostly system generated in you know, the sense that, you know, some uh, accounting uh, software uh, generated data or customer information or, uh, you know, uh, some other, uh, you know, payroll and stuff like that. So these are all, you know, very, um, you know, defined format, you know, very structured, uh, you know, data and um, and, and and then people were you know uh, so all the design was uh, the uh, based off uh, of those uh, data sets and you know it was in the uh, uh, 2000s uh, when uh, google uh, started you know uh, wanted to you know store their data 
um, I guess they, they realize that uh, the existing uh, databases uh, don't work for them. You know, uh, it's not, uh, it cannot scale uh, to the amount of uh, data that they want to store. And it can also not, uh, you know, deliver the information uh, quickly to the consumer. So, uh, and that, you know, kind of produced the whole uh, scenario of big data. And they came up with a, you know, a totally different architecture, uh, which is called distributed uh, systems and parallel processing and uh, things like that. And uh, from then, from that came, uh, you know, Yahoo took that and, you know, uh, built the whole uh, Hadoop uh, environment, uh, which is now, you know, uh, you know, one of the uh, major players in the big data world. And uh, along with that came, you know, other changes like, you know, uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, had a totally uh, different uh, data sets. You know, the, the, they didn't have any sort of structured uh, data. There was no structure to their data. It is all um, uh, purely uh, text and free form and uh, stuff like that. And uh, the whole uh, paradigm of unstructured data came from there. And uh, and then we have you know this whole uh, new set of uh, databases like uh, MongoDB, Cassandra, CouchDB, and uh, so many. Uh, now you know you have uh, so many of those unstructured or NoSQL databases, uh, which is you know uh, basically uh, you know took the limitations of SQL and RDBMS and you know take it a step further in. Uh, adapting to the uh, kind of data that generated by uh, social media and uh, internet and stuff like that. And then, you know, um, uh, we also have, uh, you know, the last uh, 10 years, uh, we, uh, you know, something that has become more and more popular and is data science. Uh, which is, uh, you know, basically uh, using machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, all those um, uh, features to uh, predict something. You know, it's 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 a some you know totally uh, different from uh, the kind of analytics that we used to do before. Okay, and um, so yeah, so let's move to the next slide. Um, so this is the uh, you know uh, architecture, uh, analytics architecture, which is uh, you know uh, I would say um, uh, this is a, a very a simplistic view and a very generalized view. Um, I mean, uh, from a um, you know um, architecture standpoint, most of the uh, analytics. Uh, you know, architecture in implementations uh, would be following a, a similar pattern. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, what we have here is, um, um, you know, th these are all the source applications, and uh, this is the data processing layer, and this is the data storage layer, and this is the um, data visualization layer, and and you know. Uh, so all uh, all the uh, uh, you know in fact you know most of the implementations whether it is on prem or whether it is cloud whether it is NoSQL based uh, you know whether it is um, uh, Google or Yahoo or Facebook or whoever are doing it you know it's it's all the the, the, the fundamental building blocks uh, are still the same you still have to do some an extraction process you have to perform some computational analysis or transformations, and you have to write the data into some, you know, storage uh, at the end, you know, uh, for retention. So that, 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 you know, flow does not change. The only thing that changes is the technology that they use and uh, how they do implement it. So the implementation, yeah, it, it definitely changes, but this kind of gives you an overall picture and and let me you know um, uh, you know go a little deeper into this. So um, what we have here is uh, you know uh, a you know a bunch of uh, applications. Um, so uh, and these applications. So if I look at uh, 
let's take an example of uh, let's say a, a retail um, uh, industry right uh, in, in case of a retail industry uh, your application one application can be your uh, uh, let's say a CRM application which has the customer information and um, uh, another application would be your uh, you know our, um, payment uh, or transaction related in application and uh, another one can be your inventory a product uh, you know uh, inventory related application so all these applications generate data in some form you know a customer uh, a crm application would have all the customer related information and um, the uh, you know so uh, and, and so this extraction process what it does it will uh, you know uh, on a periodic basis that that periodicity is uh, you know up to the implementation uh, would would uh, select you know or, or get data from each of these applications and um, you know and and perform and and uh, you know uh, on a, on a periodic basis and then you know uh, and then it, the next step is uh, basically the uh, transformation uh, uh, so this this whole thing is called you know uh, etl uh, as a abbreviation uh, you know now we also have elt which is extract load and transform uh, you know but all these three components are always there and and so uh, what happens in this transformation uh, phase is uh, basically um, uh, to give you an example, uh, you know uh, the uh, you know uh, example would be you know to to have the standardization of uh, let's say uh, some you know um, state uh, for instance you know uh, you know some uh, application would have the states in you know abbreviated in a two-letter form in uh, in another application the you know the whole name of the state would be um, would be entered so each application would have its own standard uh, standard formats you know uh, and some uh, there would be user entered value and some would be you know uh, uh, you know web based uh, pickup uh, you know a uh, pick list um, so you know uh, there will be all sorts of data coming in so here in this in this transformation process uh, what usually happens is uh, the data that is come that is uh, extracted from the source is now transformed into a single uh, or into a, a you know, standard uh, form, and um, so that you have when you uh, you know finally land into the into the data store, you have a, a unified and a single uh, point of uh, view rather than all these different forms of data. So uh, all those uh, transformations, all those uh, data cleansing is another thing that happens here. You know, if there are, you know, uh, duplicated data, then, you know, eliminating the duplicates and, you know, uh, having the um, data deduped in a, in a uh, form that, that can be consumed. You know, uh, all those uh, activities uh, happen here. So this is sort of a you know a, a critical uh, piece here, and um, and there are a lot of uh, you know I just gave some examples, but uh, usually uh, there's there's a lot of uh, you know it, it again business driven. You know those transformations are all uh, depends on what the kind of you know business uh, needs are. And uh, what the app business applications are, and based on that, you know, uh, all, you know, different activities happen here, and and then the uh, final uh, load step is basically, um, you know, how to efficiently load the data from this uh, from the pr previous step, which is the transformed data, and uh, load it efficiently and uh, store it efficiently in the uh, final data store. And, and today there are a lot of uh, you know tools uh, to uh, perform this activity. I mean, uh, when I started my development, you know, I used to hand code a lot of uh, this this uh, you know um, ETL uh, jobs. But uh, you know, today uh, there is uh, plenty of uh, ETL tools available. You know, uh, some you know some like Talon, which is uh, open source, and um, 
uh, Informatica, Pentaho, and you know, if you search online, you will find a lot of you know, tools available uh, to perform this. So you know, there is a very little hand coding that is needed today. <clears throat> and uh, <coughs> coming to the data store. So the data store, you know, um, like I said, you know, in the previous slide, uh, earlier it used to be uh, databases like Oracle, SQL Server, you know, uh, Informix and stuff like that, you know, databases that are um, more RDBMS-like. And um, today uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, what we call as data lake, uh, which is the Hadoop. And uh, and we also have, you know, um, plenty of uh, databases, uh, which, uh, uh, so, you know, which is, uh, you know, which is more like an, which is like an RDBMS, but at the same time implements the features of Hadoop uh, as a distributed processing environment. So those are called um, uh, MPP or massively parallel processing databases. Uh, to give you an example, some one is Teradata, which is very popular uh, in the financial industry, and uh, Greenplum is another one. Uh, in Oracle has uh, Exadata, and uh, you know Netiza, and you know uh, so many others, you know, uh, which are uh, popular. Uh, on the uh, you know today in the industry like financial industry and uh, you know um, other uh, inter industries, but I think uh, you know uh, with the uh, with the uh, arrival of cloud things have changed. You know there, there is a, I mean Amazon has its own uh, database like DynamoDB is there and uh, you know uh, many other uh, Google has. Um, uh, big uh, query, I think, uh, you know, um, uh, and uh, of course, Microsoft has, you know, a SQL Server, which is, um, you know, uh, on the cloud. And so, you know, and Oracle is also trying to come up on the cloud side. So, so they all, uh, you know, are, are uh, so that, that uh, you know, shift is happening. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, the, the, the fundamentals are still the same and uh, a data store is still, a data store uh, that is uh, the, the, the only difference would be whether it is, uh, you know, uh, how distributed, how, how the architecture is. And and finally, uh, coming to the uh, visualization side. Um, so um, uh, again, you know, this that's the final output that the end user uh, sees um, from, a, uh, from this all this activity that we see here. You know, from an end user standpoint, what is important is this layer, uh, which is the visualization layer. And um, they don't care, you know, how we do the extract or transform and all that, you know, what kind of uh, data store we have, all that doesn't matter at the end, you know, if the visualization layer is not um, efficient. So today, you know, uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, visualization tools in the market. I think the the uh, the major player today uh, is Tableau, and uh, and many of those you know uh, visualization uh, tools today, they also have a built-in uh, database. I mean, you cannot call that as a database by itself, but they uh, what they do is they uh, to avoid the latency of going to the data store and fetching the data and coming and reporting, rendering the data, uh, they store some, uh, you know, cache the data internally and uh, so that the, you know, the visualization is much more faster. Uh, Tableau does that, uh, you know, other, uh, you know, visualization tools like ClickView and, uh, you know, uh, MicroStrategy and all that, you know, uh, everybody has some, some form of the other. Uh, the the uh, uh, some you know uh, caching the data, so which is uh, you know kind of important from a, from a performance standpoint. So okay, and uh, with that, let me move to the. Uh, so this is a sample uh, dashboard, uh, you know, from uh, uh, retail 
uh, you know, uh, industry. And, uh, you know, I, again, I, I picked this up from internet. It's it's not uh, actual data. It's some sample data that they have. And, um, and the reason I picked this one was, you know, it, it actually, you know, uh, gives you a, a very complete picture uh, of, of the, you know, just by looking at this dashboard, um, I'm sorry. Um, so, so just by looking at this dashboard, you you uh, get a uh, in a holistic picture of uh, of where the uh, you know company stands. And uh, so on the top, you have a, a summary of uh, you know net sales. You know what is the so it's like an executive summary. You know. Uh, what is the uh, sales per square feet and what is average, you know, unit in retail and average basket size and stuff like that. So that, you know, kind of uh, gives you, a, you know, for, if, if someone uh, for, uh, uh, from a C-level executive wants to look at it, you know, just by looking at the uh, first uh, line, they, you know, they kind of uh, understand uh, where the company stands. Uh, and that is the you know uh, most important uh, point for a uh, for a dashboard. You know how how do you convey the message? You know in a quick and an efficient way. And uh, you know and 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 if you look at it here, they have uh, different uh, views of the data. So here there is a tabular form. So someone uh, an analyst wants to look at you know, uh, a specific store, they can go here and look at the store, uh, what are the sales and what is the forecast and stuff like that, uh, you know, uh, at individual store level. And they have a, a nice graph here. Uh, it's a bar graph with, um, you know, a line on top that gives you multiple uh, metrics, a perspective, multiple different perspective. And uh, there is a line graph and, uh, a donut chart in the middle and uh, a geographical uh, you know representation of a data so it, it it kind of gives you a a very uh, holistic picture of where uh, this company stands today and how different uh, sectors or with different stores different regions are performing and how different uh, you know, uh, categories of uh, merchandise are performing, and uh, so that that, that you know that is the um, I think the uh, uh, the way you know uh, from a, for a dashboard is is basically it's a it's a storytelling and it's an art of storytelling, and uh, you know uh, the, the uh, and for 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 uh, your story to be uh, um, effective. Um, you know, you have to know the audience, and um, and that's where I think uh, this this uh, that's why I wanted to share this uh, dashboard because it gives you uh, uh, you know uh, not only it gives you a different uh, type of charts, it also gives you uh, a full picture of uh, you know what they want to say. And uh, the next one. Is actually, you know, um, again, I picked this up from um, um, the public, uh, Tableau Public. And uh, so this all gives you, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> a different uh, kind of information. It's not a, uh, you know, executive like dashboard. It is more, uh, you know, convey or, you know, having some information about uh, university and what are the different. Uh, you know, race categories and how are the different race, uh, you know, uh, number of, uh, you know, uh, students from different race and, um, you know, their, you know, historical information. And uh, so, you know, again, here you have, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, how uh, you can, uh, this gives you a good representation of how you can use some data to um, convey uh, the message that is, uh, you know, related to, uh, you know, a school or university or, you know, something related to education, right? And um, and and you know, it also 
has different, uh, you know, like this uh, stack bar chart and, uh, you know, um, a, a legend that is uh, fairly informative, I would say. And uh, moving on to the next one. So uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, by now, I think, uh, uh, you know, probably everyone, uh, doesn't matter which country you are in, uh, you know, uh, you are familiar with this, right? Uh, so it's a, unfortunately, it has become so uh, common to talk about uh, the, um, the whole uh, COVID cases that uh, it has become uh, some something uh, part of our um, you know uh, our conversation today day to day to day conversation and um, and you know so so uh, one good thing um, that i uh, found out about uh, with this uh, pandemic is that uh, uh, people are talking more about uh, numbers you know it's it's, it's no longer uh, something that uh, you know uh, a corporate uh, guy or a scientific uh, you know scientist or someone from uh, accounting or something someone like that is interested in everybody is want to know uh, how the uh, is the case count going down is the hospitalization rate and all these um, you know uh, data points uh, have become um, interesting to uh, everybody, you know, across the world, and uh, I guess uh, you know that. So, and 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 uh, it also uh, brings out another important aspect here, and uh, that is the decision making. You know how much uh, the uh, right data influences the decision. So, all the governments, uh, you know, anywhere you go, uh, they talk about you know flattening the curve and you know all these different uh, um, jargons that were once uh, part of the analytics world and uh, so how uh, critical uh, this graph is for uh, for someone uh, in the uh, government uh, uh, health department uh, making decisions uh, so so uh, so it, it is you know uh, it, so that, that that's where I see that uh, the um, how uh, data has kind of uh, transformed. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it, you know, uh, it, it, you know, the pandemic is part. You know, it, it was due to pandemic, but you know, but at the same time, I think uh, something good that came out of it was that people are more and more interested in data and analyzing data. Okay, and um, so uh, what are some of the tools and technologies uh, today? Uh, so like I said, you know, Tableau is still the, uh, I think the market leader when it comes to uh, visualization and analytics uh, software. And they, they have, you know, uh, you know, actually, you know, to find, I think uh, they they came into market probably around uh, you know ten years ago, uh, but but you know they quickly became the market leader because they they found out what was uh, I guess lacking um, in the uh, in the market today, and they were quickly able to uh, build something uh, that that you know uh, that caught up on in the industry. And and uh, so right now, you know, if you look at it, they're, they're still the, uh, you know, by far the uh, uh, market leader in that segment. But in a lot of competition, you know, especially from uh, um, Microsoft Power BI, is is uh, catching up uh, quite a bit. And uh, Click View is another, uh, you know, they have been around too for some time, um, and uh, and uh, you know, so they. Some of these here are, uh, you know, um, are kind, you know, Apache Superset is a open source uh, uh, visualization software, and same as Zoho, and um, so my, both, you know, Tableau, ClickView, and Microsoft, the Power BI, even though they are, uh, you know, um, you know. Uh, 
uh, this you know the paid softwares there's still you know there is a free version of uh, available for all you know uh, you know uh, with limited capabilities obviously but there is still a, a free version available and um, and and you know a tableau has a as a public uh, there is a public you know a website called tableau public and where you can uh, publish your uh, dashboards and uh, you know you can open it up for anyone in the world to have a look at it and uh, i would encourage all of you to you know just have a you know look at the current uh, there is a lot of dashboards uh, some of them very very impressive and um, so you can have a look at it and see you know how to build some that give you some idea on uh, how to uh, build uh, dashboards and uh, there's a lot of information out there and and also excel right um, you know uh, people uh, you know before all these tools came in uh, excel was um, you know used to, for uh, you know analysis and it still has a, a pretty good uh, you know uh, chart and interface for build chart and graphs so uh, you know for anyone uh, with a small subset of data you know uh, you can quickly build a chart with uh, excel it's it's pretty powerful you know it may not have all the uh, bells and whistles like uh, you know tableau and uh, you know other bi tools but it's very, it's very powerful you know it's um, and uh, you can quickly build something out of it too um, and uh, so what are the uh, uh, latest uh, trends right uh, big data you know big data has been around for you know i can't say it is a uh, late you know uh, 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 most recent uh, innovation but it's been around for like you know uh, almost um, uh, 10 in 10 years or more and uh, but but the you know you know the data has been uh, growing bigger and bigger every day uh, so um, you know, ten years back, you know, a database of uh, you know used to, um, and the volume of database used to be in terabytes. Uh, now, you know, no one talks about terabytes. You know, it's all about petabytes. And uh, now, you know, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, petabytes was like you know even petabytes was like three four years ago. And now, you know, the next one is exabytes, or I don't know. You know, uh, it's it's definitely. Uh, not going to be um, so the data is going to uh, grow even more and more and uh, how do we handle that data and how do we you know analyze and uh, ex you know uh, get some value out of it is going to be the challenge um, uh, for the future and that is what is going on today you know you know big data is 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 is, is been around but you know it's also uh, where a lot of uh, major plays are still there, you know, especially on the cloud side with AWS and uh, Azure and uh, uh, Google. Uh, all three players are big, big into uh, this uh, data, um, you know, analysis and, um, um, you know, uh, warehousing basically. And data science. <clears throat> um, data science, again, is, you know, is, is, a, is a recent, uh, a more recent, I would say, you know, in the last five, six years. Uh, so it is about, you know, um, uh, how is it different from the uh, current analytics is um, the, uh, you know, uh, how, so the, the current, uh, you know, most of the existing analytics is what is called as uh, descriptive analytics, uh, which is basically uh, looking at the historical data and figure, you know, uh, figuring out the trends, and, uh, and there is no, uh, you know, uh, prediction involved here. It's just, you know, looking back, uh, what happened, you know, uh, uh, but what is going to happen in the future, we don't know. And that's where this whole uh, paradigm of data science came in. So here, uh, what is of interest is, you know, called predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics. 
And uh, predictive analytics is basically trying to uh, predict the outcome based on the historical data points. So, um, you know, uh, something, uh, uh, an example, if I can say, would be the uh, weather, uh, you know, patterns, which is very common now, right? Which, you know, we always um, see uh, how the uh, weather predictors have become uh, better and better. You know, 10, 20 years back, uh, you know, uh, predictions were uh, off, uh, you know, more often than, you know, right. So, uh, but even, but now if you look at, you know, even the forecasting models uh, everywhere, you know, all over the globe and in India also, you know, we are predicting, uh, you know, with a much better uh, efficiency than before. And that's all, you know, uh, coming in with the uh, high available availability of data and also the improvement of uh, machine learning algorithms and various artificial intelligence uh, that has been used to, uh, uh, you know, uh, predict those, uh, you know, build some models and predict those outcomes. And, and, you know, uh, IoT is again, uh, you know, a uh, whole um, uh, different, uh, you know, paradigm. I mean, basically, uh, IoT has completely transformed how um, uh, we, uh, you know, we uh, basically consume data, you know. So because uh, in the, in the uh, without before IOTs and uh, you know we have uh, data coming in 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 periodic intervals. It will be you know uh, maybe uh, data every hour or once a day, uh, things like that. Uh, but now we talk about uh, processing real time, you know, analysis of data real time, and it's a continuous stream of data. It's it's you know there is no pause to data, and uh, so. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's a whole different challenge and uh, it's a whole different uh, way of looking at data too. Uh, you know, it's not just about um, here when it, when you mean history, history is probably, you know, uh, one hour back. You know, it's not like, you know, uh, six months ago or one year ago. Uh, so, so the, the whole... Um, Industry. There is a whole uh, industry for IoT analytics, and uh, you know, um, and 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 how to uh, you know solve the problems there. Um, so um, I know. In in, in um, you know, conclusion. What I would say is, uh, analytics has become uh, part and parcel of uh, everything. You know. Uh, you know, even the the two webinars that you uh, heard about yesterday, and you know, day before the model, mobile lab development and edge computing, they all have analytics in there. You know, if you look if you look at your phone, uh, you'll have you know so, so much of uh, information there, and um, there is so much of data uh, that is residing in your phone. And uh, just to give an ex a simple example, right? Uh, your um, uh, if you have a step counter in your phone, you know that tells you how many steps you have taken. It you know it gives you a chart on you know how much you have uh, steps you have taken over a period of time, how many you know. Uh, so these are all uh, all analytics built on top of data. Uh, that is residing on your phone. You know, it was just a, a very simple example, I would say. And similar to that in every uh, aspect of uh, your day-to-day -day, um, activities, you know, you're consuming data on a daily basis. And uh, so the important point is, uh, you know, uh, how do we uh, gain some insights out of data and how do we make uh, uh, good decisions uh, out of it? And I think that is the critical uh, aspect of analytics. And with that, you know, I end my presentation. And uh, you know, thank you all for listening. And you know, willing to take any questions you might have. Participants, you can share your queries. Uh, 
Um, I mean, that is uh, hard to say. I mean, um, uh, so when I uh, look at it, right, um, big data and data science uh, go across the board, you know. So for IOTs, uh, you would need that data science is, you know, uh, is a, uh, I would say it's a layer on top of, uh, you know, data. Because, you know, if you have big data, uh, you still need data science to understand the uh, the data itself, right? And the same thing true for IoT. I mean, uh, IoT is generated data, generates data, but you need data science uh, on top of that to, again, comprehend that data. So, you know, they, they, they are different in terms of, uh, you know, uh, but if you want me to pick uh, one that is uh, more, uh, you know that that's uh, you know in mainstream today. That will be data science because there is you know not a lot more need for a data scientist uh, than any of the other uh, technologies. I would say because you know a data scientist can you know uh, work on big data or on IoT or cloud computing. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, prescriptive analytics is um, more like, you know, um, um, uh, so one is prediction. So once you predict, you know, uh, you have to, uh, you know, it's actually the next step, you know, to uh, prescribe what to, what to do, you know, based on the prediction. So it's, it's more, uh, you know, uh, it's not very, uh, you know, common, I would say, you know, I, I think it's uh, highly used in the, um, uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Google uh, car, Waymo, and, uh, you know, all the um, uh, new uh, technologies like that, you know, uh, self-driving cars, I would say, you know, uh, where uh, that can guide you what to do um, and not just, you know, uh, how it was done and uh, you know uh, what can be done so this will tell you hey, this is the best uh, based on the data uh, this is the best uh, thing to do next you know that's what uh, the uh, prescriptive analytics Um, well, I hope so, <laughs> you know, I hope so, uh, but definitely, you know, uh, I would say uh, analytics would be part of it. I mean, any uh, sort of scientific experiment obviously involves uh, analysis and uh, exploratory work. So obviously uh, it definitely is there, um, but uh, you know, uh, whether it helps or not, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, but uh, hopefully it does. So there is no question, sir. OK, thank you. Uh, so, uh, which I have a uh, I have a uh, doubt. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, what is the soft? Uh, what What are the softwares uh, which plays a role in uh, big data analytics and uh, uh, data science? And uh, which one is best among them? I mean that uh, depends. Uh, so today, uh, you know, depends on what uh, aspect of you know analytics are we talking about. So today, uh, you know, when you look at the uh, processing part of it, uh, you know, um, Spark is the uh, is, is a major player. Uh, Spark is basically, uh, you know, uh, in-memory processing of data, uh, be it Hadoop or you know uh, other uh, you know data stores. So um, you know, the, the, you know, in, from a processing standpoint, um, I would say Spark is the Apache Spark. Is a major player, and um, 
from a data store standpoint, you know, uh, uh, Hadoop uh, was the, uh, you know, big player in the, when it comes to, you know, uh, data store, but, uh, you know, uh, with the um, arrival of cloud, a uh, lot of people are not, uh, you know, a lot of companies uh, don't want to invest uh, heavily in their own infrastructure. And, uh, and, and you know, Hadoop uh, by itself is not, was not taken by any of the major cloud providers. So, um, you know, they do offer, they might be offering Hadoop, but uh, they also have offer their own proprietary databases, uh, which probably is more efficient. So um, Amazon or, you know, uh, Azure or any of those, you know, um, uh, they have their own um, databases, which are very similar to Hadoop. And uh, so the, the Hadoop adoption actually has come down significantly. Um, but, you know, still Cloudera has their own uh, cloud offering, which is, you know, uh, not as, uh, which is still not as as, as uh, prevalent as, you know, when you compare it to other three uh, major players in uh, cloud. Um, and from a visualization standpoint, you know, there is a lot of tools, you know, Tableau obviously is still, uh, you know, especially after being bought over by Salesforce, they are, they are a big player, but uh, each of those, you know, cloud providers, uh, you know, have their own tools. Uh, you know, I'm not very familiar with cloud. Uh, I should be honest because, you know, we don't have any uh, cloud-based, uh, you know, uh, offerings in our um, organization. So we are totally on-prem. So um, my expertise on the cloud is limited. But uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, be sure there are, uh, you know, AWS and Azure would have, uh, you know, Power BI, obviously, Microsoft would have that built into the uh, Azure uh, offering. And uh, same thing, you know, uh, uh, AWS must have their own. Thank you, Pradeep, sir for uh, such an interactive, practical presentation regarding data and analytics. Uh, Thank then, you. Uh, we are uh, going to share our uh, IGL project team feedback uh, by our students. You need to share audio. You need to sir, share. Sir, uh, sir, sir, uh, sure, sir. When you do the share, you need to click on the computer share audio box. Mm -hmm. Aaron, do you want me to share? I can do that. We can't hear the audio. We can hear only the video. We can only see the video, madam. Pradeep, are you able to hear the audio? No, right? No, oh, sir. We are processing, sir. Okay. You still can't hear. Deepa, madam, can sir, I share? Sir, uh, just a minute, sir. Sure.
No, madam, we still cannot hear the audio. Can you share, sir? Yeah, that's what I'll do. Just a moment. Good afternoon, sir. I am Janani Sita from the Second Embassy. Yes. Yes. First, First of, of all, I thank God, God to give this, this opportunity, opportunity and my sincere, sincere thanks, thanks to our department and management and my heartful thanks to Mr. Mr. Trisha Kumar, sir. sir. Ravi sir, sir and, and other members who took the initiative for this collaboration with IGN. IGN. I have, I have done, done my project, project in chatbot. chatbot. In, in the, the beginning, beginning, I don't, I don't have, have any knowledge, knowledge about, about chatbot, chatbot and JavaScript. So, so I was very nervous. nervous. But, but after, after that, that SAS sent videos, videos about, about chatbot, chatbot and JS. It was, was very, very useful. Now, now I have, have quite knowledge, knowledge about, about this platform. platform. Thank, Thank you so much, sir, for helping us. Whenever I send a query regarding about the project, you, you always, always respond, respond as, as, as soon as, as possible. possible. Uh, uh, in, spite in spite of, of your busy schedule, you, you took great, great effort, effort to complete our project. project. Thank, thank you, you so much, much sir, and, and thank, thank you, my staff. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, madam. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a uh, time to wind up. Uh, I formally invite our uh, colleague, Ms. Uh, Andishwari. Uh, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, Pandishwin ma'am. Sir, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining with us. Uh, uh, I, uh, th I thank uh, our IGL team for supporting a wonderful uh, faculty development program. Um, and it, it is a successful one, I think. A uh, lot, uh, lot of positive thoughts uh, and positive information uh, will, uh, will, uh, will access through our feedback. Uh, we will share our uh, feedback with, uh, to you too. Definitely. Madam, I'd like to say a few words uh, about, about, sure. about the program, if you can. Sure, so, sure, sure. Yeah, basically, thank you again for all the RRC management. And uh, Pradeep, uh, definitely, it was a wonderful session today. Thank you, Pradeep, for, for sharing your experience. Uh, Pradeep has been a strong supporter of IGL from day one. Uh, his expertise in the technical area, as well as in the music area, uh, has helped IGL hands-on quite a bit. Uh, lots of students have benefited from uh, from his contribution to to the group. Uh, so once again, I want to thank uh, Pradeep for today's session, and I want to thank all the IGL hands-on people as well, uh, Rajesh Kumar sir, Raghuti sir, uh, Govind, uh, who is participating now, and uh, thank you again, Adipa madam, for giving us an opportunity. And uh, so what we would try to do in the, all of these sessions is, though some of these topics might look very generic, uh, but we wanted to bring all those into our real life experiences and, and share our knowledge and, and, and the experience that we've gone through over the years. Uh, so hope that is very interesting and useful for uh, faculty and students. Uh, so once again, I want to uh, thank uh, Deepa Madam and the entire staff management of RRC to, to give us an opportunity. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to you back uh, to you, Madam. Thank you. So uh, I thank uh, and uh, we are uh, so lucky to have you have your team, sir. Uh, and uh, now uh, the time to wind up. And uh, I inform all the participants uh, that the video is available in YouTube. Uh, whenever you free, you can uh, get the knowledge from that too. And uh, formal feedback uh, will be uh, sent to uh, sent through the comment box. And you can fill up to the 
up to 1 pm so thank you so much for all the participants and the uh, chief guests who today uh, joined with us too thank you so much keep on the enjoy learning thank you thank you thank sir you. Sure. Bye, bye 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 leave sir